we go from a noisy train going by to the relaxing, serene sounds of waves rolling in from Lake Pepin. The beautiful Lake Pepin. I'm on the Wisconsin side of it. There's also a Minnesota side of it as we are right on the border. Very scenic views. I was attracted to this location because I was on my way to my previous adventure and I had to drive through this area and I said I must come back. So we are headed to Lake City to a couple of destinations. But when I saw this little area here, I had to take a gander. again fellow people today we find ourselves on another adventure on another beautiful day with these beautiful flowers in the background right here and we are at the Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum in Pepin Wisconsin it's a little confusing because I was just showing you a little bit of Pepin Lake and I'm on the Wisconsin side of the border and this is Pepin Wisconsin However, in a little bit, we are going to be traveling to the Minnesota side of the border, which is Lake City, Minnesota, but the same lake, Pepin Lake. It is a big lake. It's actually the biggest lake off, that offshoots the Mississippi River. So, little known fact. So, welcome to another edition of Tommy Travels. It's Tommy Travels! And so, we're going to check out this museum here right now and see what there is to see. So here we have a map of the upper Midwest, kind of the places that Laura traveled around during her life. And her first book, Little House in the Big Woods, takes place right here in Pepin, Wisconsin. And in that book, she talks about how the Ingalls family spent some time on Lake Pepin, which is where I just showed and where we are going to be seeing in a little bit here once again. And then from there they traveled all the way down to Kansas in Independence. And I believe that will be a future destination of Tommy Travels, so stay tuned. have an actual quilt that belonged to Laura Ingalls Wilder which is hard to find there's only two items in this museum that actually belong to the Ingalls family because the family Ma Carolyn and Pa Charles took all of their worldly possessions with them when they moved out of Pepin and so these are the only two items. This one and this quilt right here, which is believed to have been owned either by Laura or her daughter, Rose Wilder Lane, who is pictured right here. And that is a picture of her from 1923. Here's a wardrobe 
containing some of the dresses that would have been worn in the era of Little House on the Prairie. Very fancy. And some shoes up on the top. Look at these little shoes. And very tiny little feet. And then here's what one of those dresses would have looked like as it was on. Here's what a typical kitchen would look like back in the little house in the prairie days. Got the table set up here with the little cooking tools and accessories. And the old oven, which was a very modern convenience back then. And the hutch. What I really like is this wire thing here up against the bricks. Doesn't show up on camera very well, but can anyone guess what that is? That's right. It is a toaster. <laughs> well, this looks safe. Look at this tray, you can even see the nail right in there. High chairs have definitely improved in technology. Well, in last week's adventure, we saw some covered wagons, but none quite like this one. And as we saw a little bit earlier, Laura Ingalls moved around quite a bit. And it would have been in a wagon, just like this one. This looks a lot like the ones you would see on the show, too. As Pa was going into town or traveling about. Looked a lot like that. So they've got a little video playing here, which is kind of loud in this room. But I don't want to show that, but I do want to show where I'm at. It's the little schoolhouse with the teacher's desk. I do remember on Little House on the Prairie from what I watched of it, a lot of scenes in the, in the schoolroom. And so here's a little setup right here with the kids' desks and... <laughs> Apparently they taught the kids how to shoot dice back in those times. <laughs> a very helpful skill. So once upon a time, a little girl lived in the big woods of Wisconsin in a little gray house made of logs. And that's her, Laura Ingalls Wilder. And she was born seven miles from this location on February 7th, 1867. And this is that very house that Laura Ingalls Wilder was born in. Right here. Kind of a surreal experience seeing the very actual house. Can just walk right in here. Very small for a family to live in. We saw some of the furnishings at the museum. This is the little fireplace that they had. Probably where the kitchen table would have been. But they've got a picnic table here now. I think this here would have been the old master bedroom. This is what they would have seen out of the window. Charles Ingalls must have looked out here and thought, what am I going to do today? And then, here's the kids' room, apparently. It's kind of dark in here, but... Very small sleeping quarters. I don't even know how they fit a bed in here. I'm not sure how that all worked, but... I suppose the kids were small back then, so they could <laughs> get them in there. This place is actually in pretty good condition. Although it must have been pretty cold in the winter because look at this, you can see. See right outside. 
here's a view out the front window. And I think I was mistaken. This may not be a bedroom right here. I think they may have slept up here in the loft area. At least that's what they showed on the show. But this is not the actual house from the show. This is where she was born. The actual house is in Kansas. In Independence. And here's the old Ingalls front door. Pretty cool. There are a lot of trees in this area. Down the fields. And all the way around. I'm beginning to see why it was called Little House in the Big Woods. Here's a view of the side of the house. And the front is right there where we came from. And one thing that you don't really think about is even back in those days, even in the winter time, if you had to go to the bathroom, you'd have to trek out the front door and then walk all the way over here to the bathroom. And then, when you were done, you had to walk all the way back here to the front of the house. Even if it was three in the morning. So I would imagine in these days it was very helpful to have a strong bladder. Welcome to our next location here on Tommy Travel. Wow, that was great timing again for the ship horns. A couple weeks ago I had that same sort of timing if you watched my previous adventures. The reason it was so loud is because we are on Pearl of the Lake in Lake City, Minnesota. We were previously on the Wisconsin side to see the, the birth home of Laura Ingalls Wilder. And now we are on the Minnesota side to go for a little river cruise. Very beautiful area. Here are the two wheels that are powering us through the water. Some ships like these actually have big engines that that they use and these these paddles are just basically for decoration but on this one these two guys propel us along all by themselves working very hard see this lighthouse this is the only working lighthouse on the Mississippi River. And this right here is the very largest marina on the Mississippi River as well. And welcome to Tommy Travels, sir. What is your name? Larry Nielsen. Larry Nielsen. Thank you very much for taking a few minutes out here for me. And once again, welcome to Tommy Travels. And so, how long have you been doing this? I bought this boat back in 2005, so it'll be over 13 years. Uh, wow. Out here on the lake. So you're not just the captain, but the owner true, yeah. of this fine vessel. As you can see, here's a little view. And so I've been hearing you telling some interesting stories over the intercom, so um, can you give me one here for Tommy Travels? What would you like to hear about? Uh, I heard this place is also the invention of water skiing. Yeah, this is the first place of water skiing. Back in 1922, there was a young local lad, uh, uh, Ralph Samuelson, that was an avid snow skier, and he thought to himself, if I could ski on frozen water, maybe I could ski on liquid water. He went down the lumber yard, got himself a pair of boards, strapped them to his feet, had a rope to a boat, and tried to get up on the water and water ski. And he failed miserably. Back in 1922, the boats didn't have enough horsepower to get him up out of the water. 
And finally, a friend is had a seaplane. He's a trout. But my airplane's got enough horsepower. That gets you up out of the water. Oh, wow. They tied a rope to one of the floats on the seaplane, and sure enough, right here on Lake Pepin, they got him up in the water skis for the very first time in history. After that, uh, uh, he made some better skis. Most got a little more powerful. You can call it the water ski show. You can call it the Daredevil on the boards. And uh, it was popular. People would come from miles around to watch it. Eventually, he moved down to Florida, taught people how to water ski down there. And uh, the rest is history. The big world knows about water skiing now. But it all started right here on Lake Pepper in 1822. Wow, that is fascinating. That's <laughs> an interesting story. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for being on my show here today. And I see this guy over here, he's driving this, this thing am. from what I can tell. Because it's hard to drive and tell stories at the same time, I imagine. Well, I was fortunate to have two captains on the boat. So. Oh, you're the captain also? Right. Okay. Well, that makes me feel a lot safer. Uh, well, that's <laughs> And this is a little view up the captain's window here. Got the helm. So, Hopper, do you have to turn, do you actually have to turn this and you can oh, set yeah, it yeah. on We're autopilot? Just it, well, it's not on autopilot. We're just heading across to the other side of the lake right now. So, oh, okay. Really just got to keep out and make sure nobody's going to run into us. And okay. Keep it on course. And what is your name? My name is Steve Herbst. I live here in Lake City. So thank you guys very much. Yeah, come visit right. us again. Yeah. And so these two adventures kind of tie into one another because now we're cruising on Lake Pepin, which is the very lake that Laura Ingalls Wilder and her family crossed when they headed west. It was frozen. So they had to use a horse and sleigh to cross the lake, and this is the very spot where they did just that. Sometimes you hear the term in old pirate movies and things like that, to walk the plank. Well, this ship actually has a plank. <laughs> Never actually seen a plank before. I've only heard the term walk the plank. And there is one right there. Hopefully, I will not have to be walking that today. They've even got a little bar area downstairs. It's a nice day. It's not too popular of an area today. But you can still sit out here, look out the window, see the views. But this area is probably a lot more. A lot more crowded when the weather isn't so nice out. So I am scanning these waters very carefully today. You've heard of the Loch Ness Monster? Nessie? Well, Lake Pepin has its own monster called Peppy. <laughs> kind of funny, but it's true. There have been sightings dating all the way back to the 1800s and various times over the years. It's said to be smaller than an elephant, but bigger than a rhinoceros. And there is actually a $50,000 reward for any actual proof of Peppy. So I'm just checking things out. I'm sure she's around here somewhere. Well, thank you guys very much for hanging out with me today on Tommy Travels. It's been really fun. A lot of history in this area. Very beautiful Lake Pepin. I was in Wisconsin. I was in Minnesota. We've been all around today. It was great to have you along. And if you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and hit like on my YouTube channel. And then hit that little bell right next to it. That'll just give you notifications of when I come out with the new video. And then, if you'd like to follow me on social media, just go to tommytravels.fun. There's videos on there, and there are links to my Facebook and Instagram, and even a link right back to my YouTube channel. So you've got all types of ways to get a hold of me or to follow along. And thank you guys very much once again, and I hope to catch you on the flip side.